What's up, everyone? Welcome to Malta 5. My name's JD, uh, and today we are headed to Pioneer to play a deck that you all might be pretty familiar with, actually, and that is Hollow One, uh, which was a pretty solid deck in Modern for a while. Um, at least Tier 2, maybe Tier 1, it, it had a pretty good run of, of being pretty powerful. Um, and then Faithless Looting got banned, and it kind of took a nosedive and lost a lot of power. I haven't seen it much at all since then. But um, it, was a, it was a very cool deck, and so I decided to see um, if we could port it over to Pioneer. Maybe it, maybe it's powerful enough to, to make it in that new format. So, uh, so that's what we're going to try today. We're going to see if we can make Hollow One work in Pioneer. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, I will run through the deck deck real quick. We'll uh, talk about the threats first, starting with the namesake card, Hollow One, mm -hmm. uh, which is a 5-mana 4-4. Uh, which on its face looks like pretty terrible stats. Um, but it has an ability that says this spell costs two less to cast for each card you've cycled or discarded this turn. So that's the idea of this deck. Um, we do not want to be paying five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. That's just bad. However, one mana for a 4-4 four, four, um, is pretty damn good. So that's what we're trying to do. That's the goal we're trying to accomplish with this deck. And so my thought process when building this was if we want to maximize the power efficiency of Hollow One, we want to be playing it as early as possible and for as cheap as possible. So I really went all in on trying to get a turn two Hollow One um, because a turn three or a turn four, it just it isn't that impressive. I mean, you could just play green and get a turn three Steel Leaf Champion, which is a 5-4. <laughs> um, you know, like the, the creatures are just so good these days that a, a vanilla 4-4 four four isn't, it isn't amazing. So to, to make the most of it, you really want to get it as early as possible and for as cheap as possible. So anyway, so I built the deck around trying to get a turn two hollow one. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that, um, there's really, you, first of all, you need a turn one insolent neonate. Um, so you lay this guy down turn one, because then turn two, he becomes a free discard outlet. Um, it's a one one with menace, which is fine. Uh, the second ability is what's important, though. You can discard a card, sack it, and draw a card. So it's a free discard outlet. So what you do is play insolent neonate turn one. Then turn two, you attack with him. They probably can't block because even if they have one creature down, it has menace. So you at least get in a point of damage. Then you uh, use the second ability, discard a card, mm -hmm. and then you use one of your one mana discard outlets, mm -hmm. which is either Lightning Axe, um, which does require a creature, which is important. You need a creature on the battlefield to be able to use Lightning Axe. So if the opponent hasn't played a creature yet, um, mm -hmm. you need to Lightning Axe your own Insolent Neonate. And then you sack it in response. Um, so, so that's worst case scenario. You axe your own insolent neonate, but it's a one mana discard outlet, um, and could be removal in the in the process, which is just added value. Um, the other one mana discard outlet is the haggle side of Merchant of the Veil. Pay one mana, discard a card, draw a card. So, turn one insolent neonate. Turn two, you pay one mana for one of these discard outlets, either Haggle or Lightning Axe, and then you sack the Insolent Neonate for free, so now you have one more mana still left with your second land, and you can play a one mana turn two Hollow One, which is pretty damn good. Turn two, four, four is not bad. So that's the thought process here. That's how I built this deck. Um, I really wanted all the one mana discard outlets along with the free discard outlet in Insolent Neonate. Um, I did not include cards, uh, like Cathartic Reunion, which lets you discard quite a bunch. Um, here, I'll pull it up here so you guys can see. Cathartic, let's see here, there it is. Um, yeah, you get to discard two cards and draw three, um, which is nice, but this is happening on, on turn two, so at the earliest. So let's say you pay two mana to discard two cards. Um, then if it's turn two, you don't have another mana left to, even though Hollow One only casts 
cost one at this point, you don't have the mana to cast it on turn two with Cathartic mm -hmm. Reunion. So Cathartic Reunion becomes a turn three hollow one, mm -hmm. which is not, it's, it's just not as good. In my opinion, I could be wrong. Let me know your thoughts. Maybe I'm building this incorrectly, but I wanted to go all in on the turn two hollow one. Um, and what else we got for threats? So the other big one, uh, I'm calling it hollow ox because the other main threat mm -hmm. is ox of Agonis. Agonas? Agonas. Let's call it Agonis. Um, it's a new one from Theros Beyond Death. Uh, it's a 4-2. Costs 5 mana, though. The idea is we're discarding this into the graveyard and then escaping it for only 2 mana. Um, in which case, it enters the battlefield as a 5-3. Uh, the escape cost is only 2 red, but it requires 8 other cards being exiled. So this guy can be tough to cast. It is hard to fill up your graveyard in Pioneer, but... Um, you know, we do get there, and hard casting it for five mana, worst case scenario, isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, but ideally, we're we're escaping it, and um, so so yeah. There's the ox. That's the other big threat. Um, the other card that's that's actually really good. It doesn't have as impressive stats, but it's very efficient. Is the Flame Wake Phoenix? It's a two two flying haste, um, which only costs three mana, so we can hard cast it. Um, worst case scenario, but you want to get these into the graveyard, and then if uh, Ferocious is activated, if we have another creature with power 4 or greater, we can pay 1 red, and this guy returns from the graveyard, attacks immediately with haste, and so it can just keep coming back, assuming we have 4 power creatures on the battlefield. So, to maximize Flame Wake Phoenix's uh, ability, we really want creatures with 4 or more power. Hollow One fits that bill. The Ox fits that bill. Um, Croxa, which we'll talk about in a minute, fits that bill. Bone Crusher Giant fits that bill. Blood Rage Brawler fits the bill. So you get the idea. Everything. We want as many four power creatures as possible so that Flame Wake Phoenix is constantly coming back for one mana. Um, becomes really hard to deal with, can be very efficient, does work. Um, so that's the Flame Wake Phoenix. Uh, Croxa is similar to the Ox, another Theros Beyond Death card. Uh, this one, the escape cost is a little more mana intensive, but less card intensive. So double black, double red to escape it, but only requires five mm -hmm. instead of eight, like the Ox. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it ends up being kind of the same. A little more difficult on mana, but doesn't require as many cards, so, uh, but it's a 6-6, six, six, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, your opponent discards a card. Um, and if they did not discard a, a non-land, they lose 3 life. Um, mm -hmm. So pretty powerful mm -hmm. threat. It is legendary, though, and it does require black, which I'm just splashing lightly. So I only include, included 2 of it mm -hmm. and went mm -hmm. heavier on the ox. Um, Blood Rage Brawler. It's a 4-3 for 2. That's pretty good. Those are good stats. Um... The downside is you, when it enters the battlefield, you have to discard a card. But in this deck, that's not necessarily a downside. Mm -hmm. um, we can discard mm -hmm. a Fiery Temper and pay the madness cost. Mm -hmm. We can discard an Ox to get it in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the idea mm -hmm. behind the Blood Rage Brawler. And if we have an empty hand, you don't have to discard anything. You just get a 4-3 for 2 mana, and that's it. Um, turns mm -hmm. on Flame Wake Phoenix, mm -hmm. so it's just a good beater. Something to do um, on turn 2 or 3. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, those are the threat, well, Bone Crusher Giant counts, um, he plays Double Duty, it's just a great card, I mean, you, you get Stomp for 2 mana, and then you get a 4-3 later, um, for 3 mana, so it's a great card, um, and I really like the adventure cards in this deck, Bone Crusher Giant as well as Merchant of the Veil, because when you cast the front half of them, and they're on an adventure, there's still cards you have access to. You can cast the Merchant, you can cast the Bone Crusher Giant, but they're not in your hand, which is important, which plays well with Blood Rage. Um, like, for example, you have access to these cards, but you, if you don't have to discard them um, to, to, say, a Blood Rage Brawler. Um, you can have an empty hand, but still have access to them. So the adventure part is pretty cool in this deck. Um, Fiery Temper I mentioned briefly. I mean, a, a three mana lightning bolt is not that good, but uh, when you pay the madness cost, it becomes actual lightning bolt. Three damage to any target for just one red. Pretty mm -hmm. solid in this deck. Additional removal. Mm -hmm. Lightning axe I already mentioned. 
Five damage to a creature takes care of most things. So Lightning Axe is all is pretty solid. Mm. Um, finally, we got Bomat mm. Courier. I found I was kind of running out of steam quite a bit with this deck. And Bomat Courier is just a great source of card advantage. It's mm. another turn one play. Mm. If we don't have the insolent Neonate, um, mm. we can throw down a Bomat Courier instead. Start attacking right away. Start exiling a bunch of cards underneath it. And then we can discard our hand, which may have nothing in it, and refill with however many cards were exiled with the courier. Um, so it's a discard outlet. We can, again, we can discard fiery tempers and pay the madness. We can discard oxes, whatever, to hopefully refill our hand with more gas. So Bomat Courier, I found, was, was kind of necessary. I was running out of steam, especially without the Cathartic Reunion to refill our hand that way, um, that sort of thing. So, yeah, that, I think, takes care of everything. Um, yeah, I, I was playing mono red, but I decided to splash black because uh, Inverter of Truth, the Demir Inverter combo deck, is, is, is everywhere. That's the new hotness. So we needed some way to deal with that, and red just really doesn't have anything. I mean, we have access to Tormod's Crypt, but Graveyard Hate isn't the best way to combat that deck, I don't think. Um, so all it does is if you, if you clear their graveyard, it just forces them to play the inverter and the, uh, whatever the, uh, Thassa's Oracle in the same turn. So it doesn't eliminate the possibility of the combo. It just forces them, maybe delays it a little, makes them do it all at once. Mm -hmm. So Torment's Crypt is okay, mm -hmm. but I wanted to additional ways to fight that, which red doesn't really have access to. So we mm -hmm. splash black for slaughter games. That's the real reason I'm splashing black. Um, Croxa was just a, if we're going to be in black, we might as well play it. It's a, it's a good additional threat. So, uh, he's a side effect of splashing black, but the black splash is really just for slaughter games. We got to be, I'm expecting to see a lot of inverters. So that's what this is here for. Um, Fry is good against uh, blue, white control. It's good against spirits, takes care of blue and white creatures and planeswalkers, lava coil, um, more additional removal that exiles, which is important um, if we're up against like Dredgeless Dredge or something that can utilize their graveyard. Um, Lava Coil comes in handy to uh, remove those threats forever, exile them. Chandra's Defeat, uh, if we're up against another red deck, Alpine Moon against the Lotus Field combo deck. Um, that's what that's in there for. And again, Tormod's Crypt, Graveyard Hate, pretty self explanatory. So anyway, that's the deck. That's my take on the deck. There are definitely other ways you could build this. Um, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. And we're going to take this through a league. So I'll see you guys in the first round. Thank you for watching.